Okay, so if you have basic fraction skills, you should be able to figure this problem out. However, many of you are not going to get this right, not because uh, you don't have the skills to get it right, you're going to let this problem confuse you. Okay, now in mathematics, this type of fraction has a specific name. Matter of fact, if you know what type of fraction this is called, put that into the comment section, but better yet, if you can figure this out without the aid of a calculator, put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the right answer in just one second. I'm gonna tell you what type of fraction this is. This is very, very important uh, in uh, math to understand. And then of course, I'm gonna walk through the solution step by step. And by the time you finish this video, you'll be an expert in these type of fractions. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion uh, to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is five ninths, five over nine. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face, an A++, a 150%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of complex fractions, okay? That's what we're dealing with here, a complex fraction. And a complex fraction is nothing more where um, uh, either the numerator, denominator, or both uh, the numerator and denominator, you have a fraction, uh, uh, you know, within fractions effectively, right? So down here in the denominator, we have a fraction uh, in the denominator. So anytime you have fractions that are part of the numerator or denominator, of course, you can have uh, um, both fractions um, in the uh, numerator and denominator. This type of situation in mathematics is called a complex fraction. And it's important that you understand how to work with complex fractions because these problems uh, definitely come up. And again, as I kind of indicated, as long as you have basic uh, fraction skills, you should be able to just kind of, you know, handle this problem step by step. But if you're a bit confused, don't worry, I'll explain this in a second. But the reason why I gave uh, those of you out there a 150%, which normally I don't give, I just give 100%. But, uh, you know, if you got this right, that shows me that you have two great skills that a lot of people struggle uh, with, and that is, one, fraction skills. Fractions, uh, you know, the lack of un understanding of fractions is a huge problem uh, with people. People are still confused with fractions. I get it. If you are struggling with fractions, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Also give additional uh, suggestions here in a second. But uh, so, you know, you're definitely not alone if you're struggling with fractions. And then when you add in the complex fraction stuff, I mean, that just really, you know, scares a lot of students. Matter of fact, students typically will have this kind of expression. Why do you, you know, I don't even like fractions. And now you give me this complex fraction stuff. Well, let's go ahead and uh, figure out exactly how to do this problem. And for those of you that look like this, by the time you finish vi this video, you'll look like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing we want to recognize is the following. So in mathematics, when you see a fraction bar like so, we have one here and we want, uh, have one here. Basically, what you want to think of is the numerator and denominator as separate problems, okay? So for example, uh, like right here, there's only this, uh, there's nothing going on here in the num uh, numerator, so we don't have any math to do up here. But down here, we have to do some math. So you want to uh, basically separate the numerator and denominator. Okay, they're basically two separate problems. Let me give you another example. So if I have a fraction bar like this, I have seven minus 10 over three squared, okay? What you want to do is simplify this and uh, you're going to just think of that as a separate math problem as three squared. Once you take care of these component parts, then we'll put the answers to these respective problems together and simplify uh, the fraction. This is the best way to think about uh, doing uh, any fraction problem and especially a complex fraction uh, problem. So 
when you look at a fraction, even, even though that fraction is within a fraction, you're just going to look at these as little mini problems, and we want to kind of clean up, um, you know, these fractions one step at a time, okay? And, of course, it's going to be a little bit confusing, but let's go ahead and take a look at the correct order to do this problem, okay? And I kind of made a little schematic here, uh, just in case you want to retry this problem on your own. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this fraction, okay, this complex fraction. Now, notice up in the numerators, there's nothing to do. There's one. All the action is kind of down here in uh, the denominator. So the first thing we're going to do is handle this um, problem right here. we got this fraction. I can't um, um, add one to this uh, situation until I fix you know, this problem up. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what one plus one fourth is. That's going to be step one. Now, once I get this answer, I'm going to take one and divide it by that. So that'll be step two. All right. So hopefully you kind of understand my little schematic here. So again, this is step one. And then once we get the answer there, we're going to take one and we're going to divide it by that. That's step two. And then once I have all this figured out, step three is I'm going to take one and I'm going to add it to the results of this. Okay. Now, that should uh, clean up my entire denominator. So my last step is going to be 1 divided by all of this stuff that I got down here in uh, the denominator. So if you understand what I am saying, you can kind of pause the video and retry this problem. Again, the correct answer is 5 ninths. So uh, this is effectively how you handle complex fractions. Again, if you, uh, as long as you have basic fraction skills, you know you should be able to just kind of whittle through each one of these steps and just concentrate on the problem at hand, not the bigger uh, part of the problem. You don't want to look at the entire thing because that'll confuse you. Just one step at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So here, again, I have one over one plus one over uh, uh, one plus one fourth. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm kind of focusing down here in the denominator. I can't add one to all of this until I figure this fraction out. And I got to uh, start here with figuring out this denominator, one plus one fourth. So one plus one fourth is what? That's simply just one and one fourth, right? So when you see a fraction like this, one uh, plus one fourth, that's just a mixed number, one and one fourth. In other words, if I gave you the mixed number one and one fourth, that means one plus one fourth. So I'm simply going to just add uh, that one and one fourth like so. Now at this point though, this mixed number is really not going to do me any good. So I'm going to turn this mixed number fraction into an improper fraction. And that is uh, the improper fraction five fourths. Okay. So how did I get that? Well, one and one fourth to convert this into a mixed number, we have to go four times one is four, right? Plus one is five. That's our numerator right here over four. All right, so already if you're kind of like, oh boy, I'm a little bit confused on how to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. Well, that's just an indication that you need some more work on your basic fraction skills. So again, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with those basics. But uh, probably the best thing I can offer you uh, I'll leave a link to it uh, in the description below, is my Math Foundations course. It's a three-chapter kind of math boot camp for basic mathematics. I cover decimals. I cover uh, percent, fractions, all the kind of foundation, order of operations, another thing, uh, you know, all the foundational skills you need to be successful in mathematics. All right, so hopefully you understand now that one and one-fourth is the same thing as five-fourths. So that's what uh, we're going to go ahead and rewrite this fraction with a five-fourths in the denominator. Okay, so here is the problem right here. Now, when you're actually doing this, you know, you might be saying, wow, this guy's really breaking down, you know, writing a lot of steps here. Well, you need to do the same thing as well, right? If you try to do this problem, uh, you know, all at once, and a lot of students, let me kind of go up here, for example, they might do something like this. Uh, they're like, oh, okay, this is this, and then, oh, this is that, and they'll write their answer here. You know, you know, this is what drives math teachers crazy. They'll be like, you know, I have no idea what you're doing, and neither do you, okay? You can't read what's going on. You know, take the time to write things step by step, right? Remember, math is a language, and uh, you can't express what's going on unless you can see what's going on. All right, so now at this point, we have 1 over 1 plus 1, uh, uh, 1 plus 1 over 5 fourths. So that was our step 1 
our step two now is to figure out what this is. Okay, so this right here is one, all right, that's our numerator. The fraction bar is the same thing as division. So this is one divided by five fourths, one divided by five fourths. So we gotta uh, kind of figure out what this is going to be equal to. So let's gonna do that right now. So we got uh, one over five, uh, one divided by five fourths, so one over five fourths means one divided by five fourths. Again, basic fraction skills here. So uh, what we need to do is change this division problem to multiplication, right? So uh, actually, uh, let me show you here uh, how we're going to do that. Just to kind of review basic fraction skills again. So we're gonna go from division to multiplication. Remember when you're dividing fractions, we need to change it from a division problem to a multiplication problem. And we do that by flipping the fraction to the right. Okay, so the right of this is five over four, so we're gonna flip it upside down. That's gonna become four over five, okay? So now, how do we multiply two fractions? Easy, we simply uh, multiply the respective numerators and denominators, that's one times four is four, and one times five is five. So that is the answer, four fifths. Okay, so we did this right here, and this is the correct answer. So we're gonna go ahead and write four fifths for that um, step right there. Let's go to do that right now. And there is the results, right? So you can see four fifths. Uh, that is what I got. Uh, that's one divided by five fourths is four fifths. So again, um, a lot of you are going to struggle with this, not because you can't do this basic fraction work, is because you're gonna mismanage the problem. You know, you're going to, you know, uh, you know, take shortcuts and it takes discipline, it takes effort and focus. I mean, that is the number one thing, focus, uh, you know, um, to, to solve any math problem. And in today's age, it's so easy to get distracted. We got our cell phones, we got everything around us. So if you're trying to improve in math, you really have to get your state, get your uh, mental state in the highest level of focus possible. Okay, go to a quiet area, put away you know, your cell phone and focus only on the problem, okay? And uh, anyways, hopefully that kind of uh, makes sense to you. So at this point, let's take a look at where our complex fraction is. It's kind of cleaning up nice, uh, nicely here. So we have our numerator, which is one, uh, but we still have more work to do in the denominator. So we're kind of on to our step three here. So we're gonna take this one and we're gonna add it to four fifths. Let's gonna take that next step now. And that next step now is actually uh, for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you um, are going to do that, hit that notification button. Uh, this really has such a positive impact on the growth of uh, my channel. What I'm trying to do is reach as many people as possible who are struggling in mathematics, okay? And um, you know, actually, you know, uh, students uh, or people struggling in mathematics, it's a bit of a crisis. You know, we have kind of like a teacher shortage going on. And, uh, you know, math is it's so important, okay? And unfortunately, 99% of people who struggle in math don't have to struggle in math. What they need is clear and understandable instruction, and they need kind of uh, motivation and encouragement. And that's what I am trying to do. So by you hitting that subscribe button, that really does help me out. By the way, um, for those of you that are new to my channel, um, I have about 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math, uh, like calculus and everything in between on my channel. All that content is for you, so please use it. All right, back to the problem. Okay, so at this point, you know, uh, our complex fraction problem is cleaning up pretty nicely. We have one over one plus four fifths. So now we're gonna figure uh, out what one plus four fifths is, four fifth, excuse me, um, is four fifths, i say that correctly. All right, so just like we did last time, uh, this is, uh, we can write this as a mixed number fraction, and that's just one and uh, four fifths, right? So we got one divided by one and four fifths, and now we're going to change this thing into uh, an improper fraction. So this is just kind of repeating some of the stuff we did previously in uh, those few other steps, right? Okay, so we have one divided by one and four fifths. Again, we're gonna change this into an improper fraction. So let me write this right here, one and four fifths. So that's gonna be five times one is five, and then plus four is nine. Okay, so that's gonna be nine over this denominator, nine fifths. 
Okay, so this entire denominator is 9 fifths. And now finally, we are down to, um, you know, pretty much the last step. So we have our complex fraction finally whittled down into something we can kind of handle. And even this is a bit of a complex fraction because it's a, um, you know, fraction within a fraction, right? But at this point, we can figure this out because we have 1 divided by 9 fifths. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this out. And we're going to finish this problem up now. So 1 over 9 fifths is equal to 1 divided by 9 fifths. Okay, remember that division bar is the same thing as a division. And this is the uh, uh, numerator, okay? And of course, that, that's how we start off our problems. So you need to be able to um, convert a fraction problem situation into a division problem situation like this. And now we're back to dividing fractions. So we're going to convert from division to multiplication by flipping uh, the fraction to the right of the division symbol. So this is 9 fifths. So we're going to multiply by 5 over 9. All right, so when we multiply, we're simply going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 9 is 9. So our final answer is 5 over 9. Okay, so I know a lot of you are like, oh my goodness, you know, fractions. I don't like fractions, you know, but listen, complex fractions are everywhere. And if you keep uh, learning more math, you know, it's not only with just numbers. It's with variables as well. I mean, imagine doing this problem where you have things like 1 over uh, x plus 1 over uh, y. I'm just making something up here over uh, g minus uh, x. I mean, this can get crazy, but you're going to face um, situations like this. So remember, um, algebra is nothing more than arithmetic, if you will, you know, basic mathematics, because uh, these uh, letters represent numbers. Okay, if I exchange these variables for numbers, we're pretty much, you know, doing basic math. So if you want to be successful in algebra, you have to master arithmetic, fractions, order of operations, etc., etc. You want to build that strong math foundation. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.